Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about the expansion of the universe and the Hubble constant once again. And more specifically, a recent announcement from the team using the Hubble telescope that once again confirmed that there is something strange going on with the rate of the expansion of the universe, with the concept that today we refer to as the Hubble tension. The concept that suggests that the universe seems to be expanding at different rates and the actual acceleration of the expansion does not currently make any sense. But I guess let's discuss this in a little bit more detail and focus on the idea behind the expansion and also a bit about history of how we know all of this because I usually get so many questions about this. But I guess the first main question is how exactly do we even know the age of the universe? Well, we don't really know the age. We sort of estimate the age based on the expansion. With this overall concept, of course, known as the Big Bang Theory. And to try to understand all of this and the problems generated by this research, we kind of have to start in the early 1900s. Because basically for the most of the 20th century, because most of the cosmologists of the 20th century spent all of their time essentially trying to figure out what exactly is happening with the shape, the size and the age of the universe. But all of this had to be done by measuring the expansion of the universe. And all of this began with the iconic Edwin P. Hubble that you see right here. We've actually discussed this in one of the older videos that should be somewhere right there or in the description, but in a nutshell, about a hundred years ago, even though most scientists back then believed that this is pretty much the entire universe, we basically live in this galaxy known as the Milky Way, Hubble realized and helped the scientists see that there were so many other galaxies out there, with many more discovered as the time passed. And as a matter of fact, he also definitively showed that many of these galaxies were very, very, very far away, much farther than anyone ever believed. Moreover, as he started to look around the universe, he also realized that many galaxies were not really standing still. Everything was sort of moving. But what was surprising is that the farther the galaxy was, the faster it was moving away from us. And so back then, a lot of scientists agreed that the universe seems to be expanding because that was the only natural explanation. And because it's expanding, it kind of becomes possible to trace back well, everything. You can kind of move back in time and figure out when all of this started. And so this allowed the scientists to kind of estimate the beginning of the universe, the so-called Big Bang when everything started to expand. Although even back then, his early observations and early calculations, because of the unusual oddities, already suggested that something strange was going on everywhere. But in order to figure all of this out and in order to understand this, the scientists had to create what's known as the Cosmic Distance Ladder or basically a kind of a database of different galaxies with their velocity and distance away from us in order to then try to figure out how fast everything is expanding and how fast everything is moving at very far away distances. But because everything in space is already so far away, this was of course a bit of a challenge. Now for closer objects we usually use what's known as parallax. But how do you measure distances really really far away? Parallax doesn't work anymore. Well, this is where early astronomers, and specifically Hubble once again, figured out that you can actually use two things. You can use supernova, and you can also use a very specific type of a star known as a Cepheid variable. Now for supernova, we know that type 1a supernova generally explodes with a relatively similar energy, mostly because it's a white dwarf that reaches a certain limit of its mass. Now some of the recent studies have actually claimed that maybe this energy does actually vary quite a lot, but that's another story for another day, and that's actually maybe one of the solutions to the so-called Hubble constant problem. But essentially, by looking at various supernova out there, and realizing that they generally produce the same type of brightness, you can then start to establish distances across space. Then, by looking at the same galaxies where the supernova occurred and finding Cepheid variables, with this being the most famous one known as R.S. Pupis, the brightest known Cepheid variable in the Milky Way, it becomes possible to place various galaxies on a kind of a distance slash velocity scale where we start understanding where they're located and how fast they're moving. And in case you're not familiar with Cepheid variables and what exactly they do, it's a type of a star that seems to have a very specific variation in luminosity depending on its brightness. Or in other words, just like you see right here, these stars tend to blink, but the variation of their blinks directly depends on their mass and their total luminosity, and so there's actually a relationship that allows us to measure distances because of how they blink in the night skies. Something that has previously been used very actively here in the Milky Way to determine distances to very specific objects, including some of the objects in the center of the galaxy. But all of this was very hard work, and many of these galaxies were very, very, very difficult to see. 
And moreover, detecting any kind of a supernova or a Cepheid variable from these distant galaxies became very difficult. And so, back in the 90s, NASA launched an incredible mission. This was the birth of the iconic Hubble telescope, naturally named after Edwin Hubble, with the main purpose being the measurement of the expansion of the universe. That was its primary mission from the beginning. But when the telescope was initially launched, the original predictions for, for example, the age of the universe were very, very imprecise. It was believed that the universe was anywhere from about 8 billion years old to maybe 20 billion years old, maybe even older. But after the first decade of observations, and after years and years of work, the astronomers finally narrowed down the expansion by looking at various supernova, and they were able to figure out that the universe is about 13.8 billion years also suggesting that the universe might double in size in the next 10 billion years from now. But while doing these observations, something else was discovered in 1998. It was discovered that the universe seems to be even accelerating its expansion. Things really far away are actually expanding much faster than predicted. With this eventually leading to the idea we refer to as dark energy. Something, we don't know what, is causing the universe to expand and to accelerate much much faster with this very likely starting at least 5 to maybe 6 billion years ago. And since then, the idea of so-called Hubble constant was born. The idea that the universe seems to be accelerating its expansion with several papers trying to then calculate the value for that particular acceleration. Now, by early 2000s, this value might have been found by using various types of CFID variables and various types of supernova and the Hubble telescope. So, once again, by using a very similar method, and specifically using the Type 1a supernova that were detected several times across several different regions, it was determined that the value for the so-called H0, or the Hubble constant, was roughly around 72 plus minus 8 kilometers per second per megaparsec. Or basically for every million parsec, which is about 3.26 million light years, the universe was expanding approximately 72 kilometers per second faster. Which means that after a billion parsecs, this value would be approximately 72,000 kilometers per second. And as you go farther and farther, at some point, you reach the velocity of the speed of light. And that's, of course, where you reach the limit of the observable universe. Everything past that is invisible to us and will never be visible, unless some other things happen, such as, for example, the contraction of the universe, but that's another story. So in a nutshell, by using this value of um, the Hubble constant, H0 as it's known, the scientists were able to figure out that the universe is about 13.8 billion years old, plus minus a few hundred million years or so. But in 2005 and 2009, Hubble received several upgrades, and here the new value was determined once again, and was actually closer to about 73 kilometers per second per megaparsec. So, so far, no problems, everything seems to be good, we might have figured out the Hubble constant. But then other studies using very different observations and also very different telescopes were actually finding something different. The biggest such study was the so-called Planck collaboration that used the observations from the early universe, the observations from the cosmic microwave background. And here we're talking about the light that's basically as far back in time as we can see. The universe produced this light when it was only about 380,000 years old, so this was showing us literally the early universe. And interestingly enough, the observations from the cosmic microwave background actually predicted the value to be about 67.5 plus minus 0.5. Okay, let me show it to you in a graph. Over the years, it basically started to look like this. Spitzer Telescope and Hubble had the value closer to 73 to 74. Planck had it closer to 67. And notice the error bars. They don't even come close to each other. The chance for an error here was only 1 in a million. And that essentially created this so-called Hubble tension. The problem with not knowing how fast the universe is expanding, and thus how old it is, and obviously how big it is. And with more and more calculations using different methods, using different studies, these particular values did not really change. The scientists mostly found that the values were either closer to about 73, or closer to about 68, 67. Or even somewhere between that. And in some cases, certain error bars were not really touching at all. So whatever was going on here has no explanation right now. It could be brand new physics. But more recently, in the last few years, the scientists have also realized that it also seems to be related to the area of measurements. Specifically, the rates in the local universe just seem to be different to the rates in the distant universe. Which already implied that maybe the constant is not constant and it actually changed over time or is different depending on the location in the universe. 
which is already a huge problem because this constant is used in so many different formula and in so many different predictions. On the other hand, the other, I guess, more interesting explanation was in regards to our location in the local group of galaxies. And actually, that's the explanation a lot of scientists like right now. They think that maybe it's in regards to what's known as KBC void, a very large void formed by the galactic filament that represents a much lower density and thus much lower amount of stuff on the inside compared to some of the galaxies inside the cosmic web. And so by measuring various objects such as various supernova or various CFID variables that seem to be located inside the void, we might be just getting a much larger value for the Hubble constant. And the real value is much, much lower with the cosmic web and the voids in between them being responsible for the flow and for the speed of different galaxies around them. Or in other words, because of our position next to this void, we're just basically seeing things moving a little bit differently from things in the outskirts of the universe or in maybe other directions. So this could be one of the potential explanations. Another explanation is, well, different physics. Maybe our models are wrong, and maybe something else is happening in the universe we just don't really understand yet. But to try to finalize these conclusions and to try to figure out if we actually got some of the results wrong, the recent study decided to do this once again. They decided to conduct the most comprehensive and most detailed analysis using some of the recent Hubble data. Data that was collected over a 30 year period with at least 40 different so-called milepost markers or specific points along the so-called cosmic distance ladder that allowed the scientists behind the paper right here to once again try to calculate the most accurate value for this so-called Hubble constant. Here are the supernovae used for this particular study and the years when they were actually observed. And some of these supernovae were only observed a few years ago and are actually completely brand new. And these are the galaxies where these supernova occurred and the galaxies to which the distance was measured extremely accurately. And so using this super accurate analysis, the scientists once again determined the value to be very close to 73 kilometers per second per megaparsec, with only a tiny, tiny error of 1 kilometer per second. And that once again means that the Hubble tension is definitely real, because the value from the cosmic microwave background is significantly different. And so by using these 42 supernova, the scientists have definitively confirmed that we need to study this even more because nobody really knows what's happening and even using explanations like the void I previously mentioned might not really explain everything just yet. Many of these galaxies are located in very different regions of space, and so not all of them might be affected by the KBC void or by being located in a certain region of the cosmic web. So unfortunately, it's not a very satisfactory conclusion, but that's a conclusion they came to very, very recently using the most up-to-date data. And that of course means that becoming a cosmologist and trying to study this and trying to understand this is a pretty exciting time. We have another mystery nobody knows how to answer, we have another problem with the universe, and because of this we obviously have no idea how old the universe really is, how far away certain objects are from us, or if the modern cosmological theories are even correct to begin with. Now future telescopes like James Webb Telescope might be able to help us with all of this by looking even further and by detecting things we were never able to see with Hubble, but for now, there's just no direct answer other than the tension is real and the Hubble constant seems to be different depending on where you look and depending on how far away you are from planet Earth. In other words, maybe a Hubble constant is not really a constant at all. Oh, well, the chances are it still is, we just don't really understand what's happening to it. Mostly because a lot of other calculations and a lot of other observations seem to work as expected. So there's definitely something going on, but we don't know what. And once we do, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. And so make sure to subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. And also check out some of the other previous videos on this topic that you can probably find somewhere in the description as well. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.